Hello and welcome uh, to the Art of Total War Free Kingdoms. I'm Pavel Voice, um, and I'm the art director on the Historical Total War team, and I was the art director on Total War Free Kingdoms. I've been at Creative Assembly for over 15 years now. Um, the company has been making games for over 30 years, primarily on PC, but also on console and, uh, and mobile. And today, I'll be talking to you about Total War Free Kingdoms, uh, primarily the, the art direction, the challenges we faced, um, the, the, the style pillars, and, and uh, some takeaways at the end. But first, let me tell you a little bit about Total War in case you're not too familiar with the game. The game has a long history within the market, spanning uh, uh, 20 years. Uh, the first release was Shogun, and since then we've released uh, um, uh, 15 games, uh, most recently Troy. And it's primarily a historical strategy game that spans the globe across many eras, from feudal Japan to the US War of Independence from ancient Rome to, uh, to Napoleon. And we've also taken on uh, fantasy with the Warhammer series of, uh, of games. But the game primarily is, uh, is about being the, the greatest statesman people of history. Um, military and political geniuses like Caesar, Tao Tao, Washington, uh, Napoleon. It's the ability to control everything. It's decisive battles in real time on a grand turn-based strategy map. And the scale is pretty big. In, in Attila, for example, we had uh, the entirety of Europe and, and Middle East present. Um, and in Three Kingdoms, the landmass was even bigger. And you manage these vast lands and you decide on technological advancements, you make friends and enemies and you build empires. And then you zoom in, and you zoom in more and you really immerse yourself uh, in this world. A world that you can affect and, and shape with, with every action. And you get more personal. Um, you develop cities and act laws, you appoint governors and generals, you recruit soldiers into an army, you march your armies across your lands to defend and attack uh, your enemies. And then you find yourselves on the battlefield, uh, in a land battle or in a siege. And then the game is about fatigue, it's about morale, it's about breaches. Um, and you know the states because you know why you're there. Um, you know who you're fighting and you know what you're fighting for. And you get even closer. You see your soldiers fighting. You almost know them by name. Um, they're there because of you. Uh, you watch them win uh, or you watch them fail. And you really immerse yourself in this world. You create um, your own stories. You write your own history. Um, and this is, this is Total War. A combination of real-time tactics turn -based, uh, and turn-based grand strategy. Uh, in our game, everything has a context. The players know why the battles happen, between who and where, because they're the ones that engineered the situation. And overall, with so many levels of si simulation and, and the attention to detail, I feel that our games deliver a very immersive experience within strategy. So in this talk, um, I'll be covering um, some of the challenges that we faced as a development team, um, the art style um, and direction overall, and how it applied to characters, environments, uh, and the UI. And then we'll end with some, uh, with some takeaways. So, the first challenge was that we're a Western studio, based in the United Kingdom, making games uh, set enough to make a game of another culture and market. And we've had experience um, in this area with some of our previous titles, such as the Shogun series. But the samurai theme is more familiar uh, in the West through Western interpretations of movies and books. Um, and our real expertise lies within the Western Hemisphere in Europe. Um, and most of the team didn't really understand the subject matter, uh, with most only really being familiar with the Chinese movies popular in the West. Uh, and this wasn't enough. We really wanted to get the game right from a cultural point of view. From the beginning, we knew that we wanted to stay true to our, uh, uh, to, to the, our experience with Chinese cinema and get across that sense of authenticity, not just in the visuals, but, but we also, for example, wanted Mandarin, full Mandarin VO, um, and getting those translations wouldn't be easy. But you know, we had to really dig deep with a real attention to detail, um, acknowledging that we didn't know um, everything and, and some things we wouldn't get right. Um, in addition to, to thorough research, Chinese members of the team were able to help us, uh, and we also sought professional historians. And ultimately, we reached out to China uh, through um, players at an early stage and eventually partners at later stages. Uh, they could verify the quality of the content, and luckily, uh, our approach was sound and the feedback we received was very positive. Another challenge was, um, was the, the relationship between romance and records, the two, two accounts of the, of the same period. Um, Records of the Three Kingdoms is the historical document, the kind we're used to working with on Total War. Generally, for historical games, we, we find the historical text, we find the, uh, uh, the archaeological evidence, and that's what we build the game on. Um, and it's pretty much detailing historical events, major battles, and population sizes. And then there's the novel, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, a romanticized story of the same period, a historical fiction. Um, 
and straight away we found a uni unique opportunity with this challenge because um, it was so like like I said, usually we have the biographies of, 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 of people across history, detailed lists of events and important individuals and kind of a broad understanding of the masses from the history. But here, um, thanks to the novel, we had the motivations and the emotions of a wide cast of characters. Um, th this really helped us um, building on that sense of presence that we started with Total War Attila, where these heroes, these, these, these main actors are larger than life, yet still believable. Um, they're not presented through the lens of a historian, but rather a contemporary observer, um, somewhat like uh, Alexander the Great would have been viewed by one of his soldiers. Um, this romanticized uh, um, version of history as seen in the movies and the novels was a really promising concept to us. Um, but we didn't want our core history historian audience to see it as too much of a departure uh, from what they'd come to expect of historical Total War games, which ultimately spawned our two, um, two modes, the, the romance and, and the records. Uh, one, uh, embracing the larger life heroic characters, the other focusing more on the military strategy of the period. Next was the status quo uh, of Total War. Um, overall, a somewhat old school and uh, well established uh, uh, strategy game. We didn't explicitly think about a Chinese audience with Three Kingdoms from the outset, but we knew that fr from the beginning that we definitely wanted to make things differently if we wanted to succeed in the West. And if we do it right, it will definitely resonate in the East. Um, and to move forward, we had to modernize. Um, we had to uh, make uh, something more contemporary, uh, resonating better with people. Uh, we had to look to cross-genre uh, methods, um, and on top of that, build more more build on top of that build more immersion than before. Uh, and we looked outside of uh, PC strategy. Um, we looked um, for inspiration uh, in, in mobile, uh, in RPGs, in fighting games, um, in Eastern uh, television and cinema, uh, and even anime movies. One of the earliest things we knew is that um, uh, we had to have we have that cast of characters at the center, um, and they will have most of the attention. Uh, we had to build on uh, uh, on a visual and instinctual level so that players, especially in the West, will connect with them based more on the silhouette and color rather than the actual knowledge of the characters. And therefore, we needed to shake things up and and redesign uh, with those characters um, at the forefront in in the focus. So now we'll get into the uh, the art style, uh, and we'll begin with the uh, uh, yeah with the, with the, with the pillars. The goal um, was for to cr for us to create the definitive version of uh, of Three Kingdoms that builds on universal motifs, um, respecting the cultural background of the subject. Uh, we wanted to really shake up things up with the with the visuals and break some of the patterns that we'd we developed and and, and become comfortable with. Um, so instead of rooting our visuals solely in the archaeology of the period reference, um, as we we would have done in in previous games, we turned uh, to a much more modern aesthetic, uh, referencing uh, modern Chinese painters painting the same period themes but in a in a much more modern style, um, which was kind of very much the approach that we wanted to take uh, with the game. And given the prevalence of Three Kingdoms characters um, um, and stories in modern and Eastern Chinese culture, uh, we wanted to uh, draw inspiration from as many of these sources as possible, um, yet still maintaining uh, our own visual visual direction. So one of the first things that we did was create this uh, this stylescape uh, triangle to visualize where we saw the game in relation to popular culture, history, and archaeology. Um, so it's still kind of you know, towards the bottom, uh, closer to history and cinema, but still taking some inspiration from 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 the the, the pop cultural interpretations of uh, of, of the Three Kingdoms. Um, we then went on to define our style pillars, uh, which became uh, heavy use of traditional colors as a solid foundation. Uh, red, black, gold, white, uh, gold in particular became an indicator of importance in quality and and effect. Um, ethereal, mystical, to invoke the traditions of the landscape painting and, and a sense of heavenly mystery. Um, this exploration very much became the basis of our unit card design, um, as well as the use of lighting and fog um, and, in both battle and the campaign. Minimalistic, clean, clear cut. Uh, we looked um, at a lot of bold graphic design uh, inspirations in various forms, uh, but always with an East Eastern theming. Um, and this was uh, supported by a modern geometric high contrast presentation. The fine framing uh, this regular and clear but can work seamlessly with more organic forms such as the ink. Now the ink became the foundation to our interface uh, visual design uh, and with it the decision to design a UI that was more uh, modern and organic uh, straying away from our previous uh, uh, more rigid uh, traditions. 
And at this point, we knew we wanted that ink to flow, to feel alive, not just be a static smear, but a living, flowing entity. Uh, and as the foundation, um, everything is born from the ink. The illustrative style of the dynamic loading screens, um, the event animations, the characters themselves, and the in-game cinematics. And now onto the characters. With the characters being so important within the narrative, we knew we had to do something special with their design. And we didn't want to copy the countless depictions in other media, and most of all, um, um, stay true to the descriptions that we found in the novel and the records. And most importantly, um, we wanted our characters to be instantly recognizable to anybody familiar with the Three Kingdoms, because that familiarity, again, helps uh, reinforce the immersion uh, within the world. So the first thing that we needed to do is create a profile for the characters. For this, we gathered all of the information that we could from all of the sources uh, that we found, uh, highlighting the, the key characteristics. Um, and from this, uh, this informed the, the brief, which contained all of the detail uh, needed to build a picture of that character. Um, then we categorized them based on uh, on their element. Now, the elements, the five elements, was very much the foundation, the kind of the, 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 the fabric uh, uh, running for, under uh, uh, all of the, the game. Basically, everything was categorized as part of uh, uh, um, these elements, which was based on uh, uh, an, uh, an ancient Chinese philosophy of, uh, of the five elements. And the characters themselves would also be uh, a part of these, uh, these these five elements, which would have governed their overall posture, color, visual characteristics, even attitude to a certain extent. Um, and we wanted something authentic and modern um, with the character design. We wanted to move away from uh, both the, the, the dry historical representation, uh, but also stay away from the more uh, manga uh, style, um, yet draw inspiration from both to make sure that our characters, again, are more f are familiar to anyone that's, that, that's familiar with, with Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Um, so after we had all of the research, we began the, the, the concept art process. And here, a long period uh, um, ensued where um, a lot of res research and iteration, uh, getting all of those pieces together, the first of which was blocking up the characters. Um, this is to establish the rough color, the silhouette, uh, and this stage provided an important first look at the character, where we could discuss the overall posture, uh, try and embody the attitude uh, and the personality that, that, that we established in the previous research stage. Um, and our 3D character artists were also involved in this stage, uh, discussing the details of the rough design and providing 3D relevant feedback to that design. The next is where the real fun begins. Uh, concept artists uh, using detailed line art and some basic material rendering bring those characters to life. And this is where we develop a more complete feel of the characters, depicting their personality in the posture, expression, uh, and show off some of their unique traits. The concept artist then created detailed reference sheets, highlighting major features of the character design um, and expanding on the, on, with additional information uh, and detail uh, for the 3D characters to then use. And the more characters that we had, um, uh, the more established our own uh, interpretations uh, became. The next stage um, was for the 3D characters to take these concepts and reference sheets and start working on a 3D model. Um, and the first stage of that was to create a block out proxy where the artist can see how the different layers and de uh, details sit together and, and also um, how the character sits on the rig and animates. This stage was particularly important for some of our larger characters, such as Dong Zhuo, um, a lar larger in stature than any previous figures that we dealt with. We wanted to make sure that they would look right um, moving uh, around on the rig. We then began work uh, on the detail sculpt uh, recreating all of those wonderful materials and textures uh, and details and layering from the concept art. And once we were happy with the result, the low poly game mesh would be uh, created following, followed by the material. Uh, and it all then comes together to give us the, full, the final character. Um, but the work for our concept artists didn't end with the, with the concept for 3D. Um, we decided on uh, in-game UI 2D uh, representation quite early on. Um, 
as this worked well uh, with the with the other style pillars to, and allowed us to convey uh, the character's emotions better. So our artists took to the concepts and added more detail, more life, conveying emotions uh, into a set of uh, illustrations that would be used throughout the game. Something else that we did to really bring these, uh, these hero characters to the forefront um, was to use post effects. Uh, we use a lookup table or LUT, LUT system for our post and uh, post effect color correction. Um, and what we did is we had a separate LUT um, for the hero characters to really make them stand out uh, from the faceless crowd of, uh, uh, of the soldiers. And now we'll move on to the environments. China is an incredibly naturally diverse environment. The way we approach visual design for environments is by categorizing the different uh, distinctive areas uh, that we find in our research into uh, climates or biomes. And even though um, this is one country, we had a similar amount of uh, uh, these climate sets, biomes, as we've had in previous games. Um, so as I mentioned, one of the first processes was to find all of these unique areas, identify these unique areas within the landmass, um, and build a map. Uh, that would eventually become the, the, the reference to our uh, campaign and, and battle maps. And this is where we highlight the, the most iconic areas and kind of expand on them a little bit just to, just to really uh, um, um, make it feel uh, um, unique and, and, uh, um, and, and interesting. And then we created our first mood concept, which was uh, would be there to inform both campaign and battle. You know, really try and convey what we wanted to achieve with the uh, with the scale of the of the of the uh, extreme terrain um, and the beautiful details that that we found in the uh, in the research. Um, we then developed our seasonal concepts, as the game has has a seasonal cycle, and also did some campaign shroud uh, explorations. We have this fog of war, the shroud on the campaign map, and we wanted it to be uh, very much in style with the pillars and and, and the references that we'd uh, we, we'd explored in the in the earlier pre-production. I'm going to give you a little bit bit of a background to our um, our environment system um, that 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 underlies uh, all of the all of the art that that, that, that you've seen. Um, for us, the campaign and battle connectivity is very important. Um, it is that all-important context that I'd mentioned before. Uh, we want the player to be immersed in the world and recognize uh, campaign features on the battlefield and vice versa. So in this campaign example you see on the screen, um, we would expect that the battle resulting from this engagement um, would have two armies facing off against each other with a river fla framing the, battle, uh, the battlefield uh, and a settlement and mountain in the background. And to achieve this, we use a tile map system for battles that's derived from the campaign data set. So the two are very much, very linked. Um, and um, our campaign and battles are made up of tiles. Here is an example of a 2 by 3 battle tile. Um, each of these squares represents a 1 by 128 by 128 meter area with a blend skirt surrounding it. Um, these, these tiles are authored by artists. We use some procedural uh, vegetation and object generation as well as uh, uh, materials um, to, to, to get the, the, the results. And we have a lot of these, uh, all categorized into uh, campaign and battle sets as well as categorized by various climates and classes such as plains, mountains, forests, hills. And then all of these make up the tile map. Uh, first, we create the campaign tile map to represent the world, and then we derive the battle tile map from this data set. Um, and here's a zoomed in version of, of that tile map where you can see each of these pixels is a, is a, is a one by one tile. Um, uh, so 128 by 128 with a, with a, with a skirt. And then these uh, say, sizes range from anywhere from, from one by ones to 24 by 24s to even larger for the, for the big mountains. Um, and for reference, our uh, playable battlefield area uh, that you see in a battle is an 8x8, so 2x2 two two kilometers. And as I mentioned, all of the features that you see here derived from the, from the campaign uh, um, data. Uh, so all of these, uh, these tiles that you see here are the features on the campaign map. So the mountains, the, 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 the various hills and plains, uh, coastal tiles. And for example, the purple um, squares that you see here are settlement tiles. And these settlement tiles are offered by our level uh, uh, artists and, and designers. Um, and they range in different sizes, different upgrade levels, um, and contain all of the, all of the buildings. Uh, the building system, uh, which is a whole presentation in itself, uh, which we, uh, uh, we created from a, from a kit system where we could create these buildings uh, from a set of, uh, of tiles themselves. 
And for the battles, for the environments, uh, we really wanted to move away from um, our comfortable, dark, gritty, uh, Total War visual uh, of previous games. For a more bright, uh, colourful, hope-driven style, very much in line with the positive sense of change that we had running through the game. Um, and we really wanted to push the clarity, the colours, um, as well as improving the various techniques, such as uh, anti-aliasing, depth of field, uh, to really get a much more striking uh, uh, visual. And the same was true for the campaign map visuals, um, where the verticality that we wanted to achieve um, uh, following that landscape uh, painting tradition was more of a challenge. We had to deal with, uh, with readability and occlusion of important elements such as settlements because, again, we had so much more uh, verticality present uh, on the campaign map. But again, we wanted to challenge our comfort zone and really bring, uh, bring that map to life and reinforce the player's sense of uh, space and immersion within this, within this world. Um, and the player would interact with this world. Um, and for that, we needed a user interface that would reinforce that importance of character uh, and complement the player's sense of immersion. And UI is really key um, to make the players understand everything. And also from a visual perspective, the way, um, the way I think, uh, something that I think is really important is, uh, is the, the, the UI and the, the style and is the first thing. The first thing the player interacts with is, the, is that interface. So the style and, 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 and uh, the direction should, should be born from the UI and, and can kind of expand outwards. Uh, we need to, really needed to make a change with this game. Total War is a complex game, um, and one of our earliest ob object objectives was to ease accessibility. Um, um, and an accessible user interface is a, is a huge part of that. Um, because of this, um, um, and together with our bold uh, direction of modern minimalistic, we knew we needed to, uh, uh, an overhaul. Uh, and given the amount of information in the Total War game, we adopted a, an onion mentality. Layers of information, clear and minimalist on the surface, um, but but peel back for more info, um, whether through 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 the help uh, um, screen, but also um, even through um, 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 extra detail within within the panels and, and information. And the first thing to go was a standard, rigid, physically based skeuomorphic visual design in favour of a more abstract uh, ink based theme. Blank, black ink on, uh, on white paper was a very strong theme uh, for the clarity, for the contrast, even for the yin-yang um, aspect. Um, we, w we added white in the form of clouds and mist, um, and we wanted to, the UI to feel alive and flowing and, and, and ever-changing. Um, and this was a challenge. Um, so one of the first things that we did was when we knew that we would be working with, with an ink uh, style, we set up a small test space um, where we spent some time um, experimenting, filming, photographing ink um, to really get a feel of how it would work within the UI. Um, and we played around with different consistencies, different amounts of water, different types of ink, different types of brush, uh, different types of paper, uh, to really try and get that, 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 uh, um, um, that, that, that ink uh, uh, across and, and get it flowing and, and, and changing and morphing. Um, and we used a lot of these tests to create uh, templates for the game and wrote a shader to replicate that ink effect in the game um, to, to basically help uh, with whenever panels opened or closed and also with some subtle background animations within the, within the static UI. One of the most striking examples of ink in the game is the tech tree. Given the apt theme and, and, and symbology, we knew that we wanted it to be an actual tree from the very beginning, a peach or a plum. Um, and the designers came through and designed a tree. Here it was, divided into those elements that we described previously. Um, but it wasn't. It didn't really quite have the 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 the, the vibes that, that that we imagined. Um, so began um, our work on on trying to represent this tree, um, and it became our our primary ink test case uh, to to see how we can get that ink um, and and use it within something as as important as the technology tree. And it came a long way from the from the initial designer mock-up, um, and we were very happy with it. And that style kind of permeated through through the rest of the game. Earlier, I mentioned um, the importance of characters in Free Kingdoms. So, in developing the UI, we we had to um, bring those characters to the forefront. Um, occupy a lot of screen space, be memorable and cool. 
something that will make you want to play them, even if you don't know anything about them. Um, this is where you know we, we looked at inspiration from, from other games, as I mentioned before, fighting games. So when you're presented, when you start the game, you're not presented uh, with a faction. You're presented with a character. And you choose those characters because they're cool, because you want to play them. Um, and this, this is something that permeated throughout from the front-end design um, to the in-game panels to build the immersion through uh, uh, through uh, reminding you constantly who those characters are um, because everything is about these 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 larger-than-life characters not so much about the units in this game and that's it um, so now for some takeaways You have to absolutely immerse yourself, otherwise it won't work. If you want to create an immersive game, the first thing you have to do is immerse yourself in that in, in that subject matter. Otherwise, why why should your players um, be immersed in the game if, if you are not when creating it? Um, this is something that I very much uh, uh, believe in when 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 tackling any kind of game with uh, even with the, with historical games. Is, is you know you, you you just immerse yourself in that period of history. You you live it. You breathe it. You become it. So that so then when you're developing it, you can always reference back to that, not to a textbook for a reference, but to that feeling, to that feeling feeling of being within within that place. Um, it's almost like a you know a, a method. <laughs> Um, acting version of, of development, uh, developing where you just basically uh, become that 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 period and and, and really understand it um, to deliver um, you know that that level of immersion within the game. Consequentiality. This is something that is. Uh, um, this is something that that's very relates very much to the immersion. This is something that's not only as a as a design methodology where um, you know red herrings and story fillers are okay, but if a player interacts with something, it has to feed back to the whole. Um, this builds on that player sense of immersion, and very much even in art, this consequentiality is that is that is that relationship between campaign and battle, for example, where the environment that, you, that the character is in within the campaign is represented in the battle, giving you that connection, that that consequence. Um, very important. Persistence. You have to be persistent. If you believe in something, be stubborn if necessary. Just because it didn't turn out well in the, the first time doesn't mean it won't ever. Um, just, just keep going. <laughs> and you have to tinker. You have to have that tinkering mentality. Fine tune and refine. Good enough is not good enough. Um, great is a long way away from that. Um, you need to build in the time to get things right. Don't expect to get it done in the first run. If you do, fantastic, but generally iterate. Um, and you have to be respectful to uh, to other pe others and, and other cultures. Um, ultimately, as, as Creative Assembly, as a studio, we uh, it's our responsibility when we make these games to tell the stories of humankind in different cultures, bringing them to a wider audience. Um, so you need to do your research diligently and accept that you won't get everything right and always be mindful of other perspectives and viewpoints. Uh, seek help and advice where necessary. Reach out to experts and 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 and, uh, and scholars that are familiar with 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 what you're doing, and 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 get them on board uh, to make sure that you do it right. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Uh, I, fo I hope you found this uh, talk um, somehow useful and, and informative. So thank you and uh, goodbye.